October 10th this year is not just the anniversary of a revolution in China. It is the day the Supreme Court will consider how strong or weak race-conscious programs, affirmative action programs, will be. Ms. Fisher, in that case, is a white applicant to the undergraduate programs at the University of Texas at Austin. That's a school that's like their Berkeley. She claims she was denied admission because the university has an affirmative action program that took account of race for African American and Latino applicants, two groups that were actually excluded completely from the University of Texas in the past. One of the claims that Ms. Fisher cites is that Asian Americans are disadvantaged by the admission of these minorities because of their high SAT scores, higher than other minorities. Of course, the test scores are higher than white applicants as well. <laughs> but she doesn't mention that. The brief, and I uh, others wrote, for advancing justice, the organization of Chinese Americans, the Asian American Business Roundtable, the Asian Law Caucus, a hell of a lot of bar associations, and for many others, argues against Ms. Fisher. In fact, over 70 Asian American organizations joined that brief. The brief makes several arguments. History. Asian Americans have been explicitly subject to discrimination in law and practice and benefited from affirmative action programs until they were no longer needed, as I talked about. Social science. Diversity benefits Asian American students at universities, both to overcome the students' stereotypes about others and helping others to overcome their stereotypes about Asian Americans. Numbers. Asian American students are not excluded by the University of Texas. Austin and Texas are not San Francisco. The Asian American population in Texas is 4%. The Asian American student population at UT Austin is 20%. Asian Americans do get higher average SAT scores than other groups, but the SAT is not the only criterion used for admission. The SAT is actually a poor predictor of performance, especially after the first year. But the most important argument we make is about leadership. The mission of the University of Texas is to train the state's leaders, just as the mission of the University of California is to train our state's leaders. These schools do a good job of training Asian American students for leadership positions in their careers. So unlike Latino and African Americans, Asian Americans get, get, get in the college door to get that training. But there is a problem for Asian Americans after college. In Texas, I'm sorry to give you some numbers, 54% of Asian Americans over age 25 have at least a bachelor's degree. Half of the Asian Americans over the age of 25 have at least a bachelor's degree. The comparable number for whites in Texas is 34 percent. That's 20 percentage points lower. Yet the payoff in terms of attaining leadership positions is not commensurate with the higher educational attainment. 13% of whites are managers. Only 9% of Asian Americans hold these leadership positions in Texas. This disparity has economic consequences. The per capita individual income of Asian Americans in Texas is three quarters of whites. 
28,000 versus 35,000. The numbers in the nation as a whole are similar to the Texas numbers. There's a shortfall of Asian Americans in management positions, corporate, and government. This is old news to you. Representative Judy Chu, Mayor Ed Lee, there are exceptions. The same kind of ex disparities exist, as you know, in government contracting. The fact is that most Asian Americans do not need affirmative action admissions to obtain equal educational opportunity. Filipinos, Japanese, and Pacific Islanders may be different, but the numbers clearly tell us that there is a glass ceiling in employment and business, and that affirmative action and civil rights actions are needed to achieve leadership positions for Asian Americans in their careers. The Fisher case will affect the people in this room. Fisher is a case about university admissions, but the legal principles that underlie affirmative action diversity programs are very similar to the principles that underlie race conscious employment and contracting programs. We can get in the college door, but we too suffer from discrimination and exclusion. It may be not as brutal, but is every bit as consequential. We as a community are in the very same boat as African Americans and Latinos. I don't think anything I've said is news to you because your family histories are the same and your life experiences are the same. My life has been better than my parents, but I too have encountered the kind of ugly things, not as ugly as what my parents encountered. And so have you. What should we do? Obviously, we should unite in organizations like Asian Inc. We should vote and participate as citizens. We should support leaders, our own and others, who understand our struggles and will help us. I didn't understand all of the mayor's propositions, but they sounded pretty good. <laughs> Judy Chu's law about recognizing the Chinese Exclusion Act, that really hits home because my parents were separated for 20 years because of that law. 20 years, a whole generation. We should obviously ally ourselves with those who suffer as we suffer. We should not throw them off the boat. We should support their civil rights struggles and seek their support in our civil rights struggles. And we shouldn't forget our history. My father's story, my father-in-law's story, they're the story of your parents. Their fierce conviction, their fierce passion, passions, standing up to discrimination. That's not news to you because you know it from your own family. Last, we should remember that our struggle is not for ourselves alone. The pride we feel in our children getting into those good schools is mixed with the apprehension that they will graduate and encounter glass ceilings in their careers. It's a fear we have. We should acknowledge that and we should act upon it. We should stand up just as our parents did and make our children's world better than the world that we have lived in. Thank you very much.